Hello, welcome to the show. It's been a while, Retro fans, but we're finally back. So let's have some fun. I'm hoping today this is a bit of a special episode. I've got some some really good news, actually, that I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing. And I did mean to make a video about this um, when the news came about uh, more recently, but I've only just got a chance to do it now. So hopefully you can see lots of odd Sega games here at the back. This is um, the Sega 6th generation tower. What on earth is the Sega 6th generation tower? Well, for the last year or so, I've been going out of my way to collect every single Sega game that was released in the UK and, and mostly Europe uh, for the 6th generation of consoles. What does that actually mean? So we've got a full Dreamcast PAL set. We've got every single Sega game released for the PS2. Um, Xbox and GameCube, which you can see floating around. The reason for all these ones at the front is this is a lot of my Sonic Team stuff, which goes on the, the Sonic wall. So normally this wouldn't all be here. Um, there'll, there'll be a picture flashing up, hopefully, of what it all looks like. But yes, I did it. So this is the Sega 6th generation tower. I really love it. I'm really impressed. I've, I've never had a full set before. Um, the reason why I chose to go with this one rather than any other Sega set was that while I have the most nostalgia for the Mega Drive and Master System and, and, and that era of gaming, when I really thought about it, the sixth generation of consoles is my favourite era in video games. I absolutely fell in love with the Dreamcast, there's no secret there, it is my favourite console. Um, as much as I despise Sony, PS2 is, is mind-blowing and, and the wealth of great games on the Xbox and GameCube as well means that for me it, it probably was the best time for gaming uh, ever. I know everyone will disagree, plenty of people have their own opinions, but that's why I went for this. And I had lots of it already, I had loads of Dreamcast games, I had loads of the Xbox and GameCube and PlayStation 2 games, so it just kind of made sense. I won a raffle on one of the Facebook groups and it had about 40, 45 Dreamcast games or something. And when I sort of put that with what I already had, I was already about halfway to the whole collection. So I just thought, let's go for it. And I did it all in a year. I set myself a year target. It was a lot of trading. Um, I've sold a lot of bits as well. A lot of my Nintendo collections gone to some great people out there in the UK and a few, few of my friends abroad. I've had lots of the Nintendo stuff. So I don't mind about that because it was stuff that just sat on a shelf. And while I liked it, it wasn't really something I was ever using. So, so I've cleared a lot of space and I've replaced it with the Sega 6th Gen Tower. I never really had any intention to ever do a full set, um, but when I started doing it, I, I got really into it. It gets very addictive very quickly, and when you start seeing things come up on groups, like bundles, or on eBay or some good deal, you want to kind of jump at it. So it really got me back into sort of the trading buzz, which had kind of fallen by the wayside before I started doing this. So I've made lots of great connections, and I've done lots of great deals, and that was all really fun, and it's all there. It, how do I feel about full sets though? I, it's a difficult one for me because there's lots of games here that I really don't care about. Most of them I think are okay. I think Sega had a really good run um, for distributing and, and developing their own games during this period. But there's a lot of games here, especially in the Dreamcast collection, where I just think this isn't a very good computer game and it's not the sort of thing I would have bought unless I was doing this full set. And it also makes me sad because I played it once for like five, ten minutes, realised it's not my kind of game and I don't really want to put much time into it and it's just going to sit on a shelf and that upsets me because there might be someone else out there that would enjoy it. But then I think the game itself isn't very good, so would it just sit on their shelf? So I'm still not convinced about full sets. I prefer doing it the way I've done it, which is getting, so like, say, say if someone was like a, uh, I don't know, an Activision fan or was a Capcom fan, like getting all of the games for that particular company because you'll probably like it, like, oh, I obviously love Sega. That's why I've gone for the Sega games. I think for me, then it gives me a lot more games I want to play. But then the difference to that is the Dreamcast full set, which has lots of other company games, obviously, that I don't really wish to play. So I'm in two minds about whether or not it, it was a good venture. I'm enjoying it, though. I love looking at it. I love playing all the games. It's actually given me a few Dreamcast games and a few PlayStation 2 games that I probably may not have got to at any point. So I'm glad to have had that experience. But that's the news and hopefully um, you can see it will complement my Dreamcast collection anyway and hopefully there's another another picture popping up for that. But that was the news. I just wanted to get back onto the onto the airways, back onto the onto the YouTube. 
and talk about what's next. So now that I've done this, I'm also very close, and those that follow follow me on a regular basis know how close I am to finish my Sonic collection. So that's coming as well. And then once I've done the Sonic collection, now I've done this Sega sixth generation collection. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what's going to happen in terms of collecting. I'll always buy Sonic games, different variants of things as I see them, but Retro Games is a bit stuck. Doesn't really know what to go for next. So watch this space and um, we'll see where it goes. The other thing is, another reason I wanted to get back onto the onto the airwaves today was a big anniversary for me and for many Sega fans is coming up soon, the 25th anniversary of Sonic and Knuckles. Like, it is my favourite console game, it's my favourite Sega game, it's the best Sonic game, well, in my opinion, and hopefully it's going to be a big celebration. I'm putting together lots of content at the moment, I just wanted to do a little bit of a, a pre preamble if you like get myself back out there do a video just so i'm getting back into things and watch this space for lots of sonic and knuckles content coming um it's the 7, 18th of october this year so a um, couple of fridays time not this friday the next friday so hopefully big celebrations if you've got any memories you want to share about the game or even just anything you want to say about it let me know, pop me a message, um, check the, um, the section, um, the, the, the about section here and you can get to my Facebook and, and my, my website, etc. And you can send me an email or just drop a message here if you want to say anything about it. I'm trying to get as much information as I can and as much people's feedback, even if it's negative. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, um, I'm happy to take some criticism on behalf of Sonic and Knuckles and hopefully there'll be some great content. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you're happy that I've got this out of the way and I don't have to lead on about Dreamcast too much. So I've been Retro Faith. Thanks for watching. It's great to be back. Keep it retro.